In this problem, we're told a packing crate with mass 80 kilograms is at rest on a horizontal frictionless surface. At t equals zero, a net horizontal force in the positive x direction is applied to the crate. The force has a constant value of 80 newtons for 12 seconds, and then decreases linearly with time so it becomes zero after an additional six seconds. What is the final speed of the crate 18 seconds after the force was first applied? So the way you want to think about this problem is sort of as a number line. So let me show you this. So imagine this is our number line here. And so, right, so imagine this is V sub zero, the initial velocity, right? And so let's label this zero. So this is gonna be a timeline, right? So from zero all the way to 18. This is 18 at the end, right? And it's gonna have some V final velocity, right? So what we wanna do is label the different parts acting on it. So we know for the first 12 seconds, it's gonna have a constant value of 80 newtons. So uh, let's label it like this. So for this time, it's gonna have an F equals 80 newtons, it's constant. For this interval, it's going to have some other f, right? It's going to be a function, right? And we're going to solve for that function because we need it to solve. So how do we solve this problem? So uh, what we need to do is essentially we're going to use uh, momentum and the change in momentum. So what do we know about momentum? So we know momentum is equal to mv, right? But we need to know the change in momentum, okay? So change in momentum is just going to be m times v final minus m times v initial, right? And we can just rewrite it as m times v final minus v initial, right? Because essentially this is just the final momentum minus the initial gives you the change. And then I just factor out an m to get this, okay? And so what also, so what we want to do is find this velocity here. And so you can call this v final. That's what it represents in this equation. You can call it v final one or whatever. I guess we'll just write that. So v final one uh, is what we're solving for, right? And so uh, the way we do this is by, this is going to be the change in the momentum, right? and it has v final one. But what can we set this equal to? So the change in momentum, or momentum is equal to force times distance, or force times time, sorry. Force times time, if it's a constant force being applied. So in this case, throughout this interval, it is just one constant force being applied. So the change in momentum, right, is equal to f times t, which essentially means we can just set this equation, the change in momentum on this side, is equal to the change in momentum, which is just ft. And that's going to allow us to solve for this. So uh, let's go ahead and just do that, right? So the force being applied throughout this interval, constant 80 newtons, right? So 80 multiplied by the time, how long is being applied? Uh, the time interval is going to be 12 seconds long, right? This is 12 seconds. So 80 times 12 is equal to the mass. And they tell us the mass is going to be 80 kilograms. So 80 kilograms and then V final initial minus, or V final one, we don't know, right? And then minus v initial, what's v initial? Well, we don't know that, or we do know it, it's at rest, so it's just zero. So it's just this, right? Minus zero is just the same thing. And then we can divide by 80, right? When we divide by 80, notice this just cancels. So v final one is equal just to 12. And then it's meters per second because it's velocity, right? So the speed here is 12 meters per second. Cool, now we know that. Now, how do we solve for this part? So we're going to do the same exact thing, except for it's going to be a little bit different because the force is not constant. So keep in mind, we can do the same thing, right? This momentum, right? M times V final. I'm just going to say V final because it's actually the final one this time. Minus V initial, right? Keep in mind, we know this. We know the mass. And then V initial is just going to be the speed in the beginning, which we just solve for 12 meters per second. But what is FT going to be? So keep in mind, since it's not constant, it's not going to be FT. Instead, when it's not constant, it's the integral of your force function times uh, dt, right? So the integral of f dt. And so uh, f is going to be a function that we have to solve for. So how do we find it? So they tell us that it's going to decrease linearly, so it becomes zero after an additional six seconds, right? So it's going to equal 80. So essentially what we can do is just say 80, right, which is going to be how much it decreases. And then uh, what we're going to want to do, right, is, or so the force, right? Sorry, I messed up. It's gonna be zero equals 80 and then minus the rate at which it decreases, right? And we, we don't know the rate yet, but what we can do is just say, um, right? So it's just gonna be some uh, rate at which it decreases, right? Times time, which is just, let's just say the force at F is the rate at which it decreases and then T is the time, right? So it's gonna decrease at some rate and we multiply by six seconds and it should equal zero because it goes from 80 to zero. So we can solve for f in this case, the rate at which it decreases. So minus 80, right, from both sides, uh, and then divide by um, minus 6. So when you do that, uh, just divide, right, the minus signs cancel, and then 
you can divide by 2. So this is just going to be 40 over 3. So we know f equals 40 over 3. Okay, so 40 over 3. And then we can just rewrite our function. So it's going to be equal to, right, you could say f is equal to 80 minus f, which we just solved for, 40 over 3 times the time, which is 6 seconds, right? And this is the linear function at which it decreases. So now we have f, and we can just solve. So this right here is going to be equal to this, right? So the integral of f, which is 80 minus 40 over 3t dt. And so let's take the integral. Uh, you should know how to do this. So integral of 80, it's a constant, so it's just 80t. Uh, and then this right here is just going to be minus, and then so this is going to become t squared, and then we divide by that exponent. So minus 40, and then it's going to be over 6. So 40 like that. So 80t minus 40t squared over 6, right? And that's this side of the equation, right? Because this equals this. So essentially, this is just going to be 80t minus 40t squared over 6. So uh, let's replace these numbers. So I'm just going to cross it out because I don't really have room. But m is our mass, which we know is 80 kilograms. So this is 80. Uh, v final, we don't know, minus v initial, right? Which is 12, right? Because it's this interval right here. So now you have 80t minus 40t squared over 6 equals 80 times v final uh, minus 12. Right, so uh, what you're going to want to do, right, is uh, we have to evaluate this integral at 6 because that's the interval it's going to be on, right, because it's from 0 to 6, you could say. So we just plug in 6 into this, right, because even though we took the function, we have to take into account how long it's going for. So you want to plug in 6 into this, right? So plugging in 6, 6 times 80 is 480. And then if you plug in 6 into this, 6 squared is going to cancel with one of the 6s, so it's just 6 times 40. So 6 times 40 is just uh, 240, right? And that's equal to uh, this right here. So 80 times V final minus 12, right? So what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and solve. So 480 minus 240 is 240 equals 80 times V final minus 12. Divide by 80. This is just 240 divided by 80 is 3. So equals VF minus 12 add 12 to both sides, VF equals 15. So this is going to be the speed, right? So VF, right, the speed right here, 15 meters per second. That's what we just solved for. But essentially, we just had to take into account this one was constant, this one wasn't. So when we solve this problem, we had to make sure this was um, integrated. But yeah, so after 18 seconds, uh, this is going to be the final speed, right? So 15 meters per second. Uh, yeah, so this right here is your answer, 15 meters per second. And uh, hopefully you found this uh, useful.